hoe, that's a, called a draw hoe or an onion hoe. So you make a, a wide trench like that in the middle of your bed. Now with peas, you don't want to sow them all in one go. So you just sow half the amount and then two, three months later, you do the next half. Okay. So you get succession. Ah, right, okay. That's about three centimeters deep. It looks a lot more, yeah? Yeah. But that soil is above, it's you know, up, done, it's piled up and yeah. it's quite loose as well. Yeah, yeah. Put them in in a pattern like that every two, three centimeters. For a family of four, I would plant about five meters. And then again, in two months later, another five meters. And that should give you more than enough, even enough for freezing. Once that's finished, rake it level. Go diagonally this way. You go one swoop and bring it all the way gently across. That stops the big lumps, especially if you have a clay soil. And then we'll tap them in. Yeah, when they're just germinating, when they're sm small, there'll be lots of weeds everywhere, also amongst the peas. So I'll do something very cruel and people always get a shock. I'll put the rake over and rake right over the peas. Yeah. And they don't come out or don't get damaged. Mm. So gently run the rake over and that that's again the fall seed bear technique, you know, controlling the weeds before. Right, well, here's the peas that we sowed earlier. How are they doing? Good, good. And I apologize, I should have staked them by now. <laughs> yeah, and uh, because they, they see the tendrils, they want to climb up somewhere. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> what I'll do is have fence posts on either side yeah. and a chicken wire across. Across, yeah. yeah. You can't just use bamboo poles? or No, bamboo poles, uh, they don't climb up. What you could do is make a framework with bamboo canes, but mm. you still need some pea sticks. Mm. And that means little branches of hazel or so, which are widely yeah. branched, and they climb up easily there. Yeah. I see you've earthed them up a little. But it also is good for weed control. You know, I earth them up and the weeds in between get covered up yeah. and uh, can't grow then. Right, I'm kind of meeting you across the garden fence here. Close. <laughs> but uh, unbelievably, these are the little peas that we saw. We put those time. seeds in magic, isn't it? Yeah, really uh, vigorous. So is there anything we need to look out for? These look super healthy. Do we have any pests or diseases we should be... Not really. Not really. No, nothing at all yeah. whatsoever. No, mice, I sometimes would go for the seeds. Yeah, but once we got to this stage, there's no problem. They should be fine, yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't worry about them at all now. And what about, I mean, of course, uh, peas uh, fix nitrogen from the air, but do we need to feed them at all? No, no, no they're no. very happy. And you can no. see that they look happy too. Yeah, they look great. Feeding might be counterproductive now at this stage. Okay. Each flower will produce a pea. You can see the sequence here. You have the flower and then you have the tiny pea with the flower still attached. And then the flower is gone and then they grow bigger and bigger. The one important bit with peas and beans, in fact, is that you harvest them regularly. Okay. So every single week you should harvest what's ready. You have to keep it, you have to be greedy with your peas. Oh, okay. That's the only way that you have a longer season. If you forget, if you go away for a couple of weeks and don't harvest them, they'll stop flowering and it's then it's over. the end. Then it's all over. Okay. Harvesting them t at the early stage, be careful. Two hands, yeah. hold it here on the stem and then pull it and you have it nicely with the handle and a little crown. 